USC and you're probably wondering why I'm back at college. Is it because I'm 29 and still don't have a degree? No! It's because we're meeting Pavitra today, who is, oh, let's see, uh, pre-med, she uh, plays the piano, she sings, she dances, she's a screenwriter, a journalist, and probably an astronaut. But she is also a Hindu. So we're gonna learn about Hinduism and see if I can get some good karma with the, the college crowd. I should have brought beer. Nice to meet you, I'm Zach. Nice to meet you too. Were you studying all day or what? is it finals time? What's going on now? I had a couple presentations. <laughs> a couple presentations? Uh, yeah, I mean, some are more fun than others, well, but... Thanks, uh, thanks for finding the time. I guess let's go learn about Hinduism and uh, everything that you do. Oh, okay. What year of college are you in right now? I'm actually wrapping up my undergraduate and my graduate degrees. I was a progressive degree student, so uh, in a week or two weeks, I'll be walking um, and receiving both my bachelor's in psychology and my master's in global medicine. How did you manage to get two degrees so early? Lots of classes. <laughs> what was your spiritual life like growing up? What were the values your, your parents taught you? Two of the biggest values my parents taught me are two of the most central ones in Hinduism, karma and dharma. Karma is basically what you put into the universe will come back to you. It's very much a personal connection with the universe. Mm -hmm. What's dharma? Is it like that Dharma and Greg show? Because I was not a fan of that. <laughs> Dharma is really a person's calling in life, or their duty is really what Dharma refers to in a lot of ways. How does one practice Hinduism, and how do you worship, and what do you worship? Well, I mean, I like to say there are as many different ways of practicing Hinduism as there are Hindus in the world. Uh, the way I practice Hinduism is very different from the way my friends practice Hinduism, um, which is different from the way my parents practice Hinduism. Let's just focus on you and your parents. How do you practice Hinduism differently than your parents do? Um, well, I grew up here. Since culture is such a big part of Hinduism, since it's such a personal religion, I think that really influences the way in which I see the world. I see karma and dharma as the most important things as opposed to all the stories, but I also really, really, really enjoy the stories about Hinduism. One of the things that I've always been unclear on is what is actually cultural and in Indian culture versus what is Hindu culture. It's hard to take this, this spiritual entity that's been growing alongside culture in India. Hinduism is one of the oldest religions in the world. And box it up into this thing that we like to call religion. There's no one person that we know of that founded Hinduism. We can't, we can't trace it back. Uh, it wasn't even called Hinduism for the longest time. Hindu is actually a Persian word which uh, was used to denote people of India. And so Indianism and Hinduism have been so intricately put together that I can't, I can't tell you exactly where the line is. I can tell you that parts of my Indian heritage definitely contribute to the way I practice Hinduism. Are there rituals and things like that that you practice? Yes, uh, we have arthis and pujas, which are kind of offerings to the gods. Um, the gods are, I can tell you a little bit more about yeah, that. Yeah, I don't know, how many gods are there? I. So there are millions and millions of gods in my understanding, what? but they're all manifestations of what we, at least in my understanding of Hinduism, they're all manifestations of Brahman, which is kind of a universal spirit. I don't know if I would put the word God onto that because it has no form, it has no shape. There's a bit of Brahman in every single one of us, according to Hinduism. Can we talk about your particular sect of Hinduism and how it differs from, from others? So the sect of Hinduism that I'm most familiar with is Shaivism, which is uh, basically the worship of the Lord Shiva, who is the god of destruction. Why would you worship the destroyer? Because destruction is a normal part of life. Things come to being, things die out. How do you worship him? Like, do you break a lot of things? Like throw, throwing dishes and stuff or is it No, it's not so not. much destroying ourselves. It's just um, yeah, asking for safety and a clear path ahead. And you know, we have symbols like I, in my own you know, cultural beliefs, believe that the bindi or the, the dot on the forehead, as many people would call it, um, is a symbol of Shiva's third eye or the eye of destruction, the eye of power. Why do people 
uh, wh where the the bindi and why why don't you have one? I do have one. It's in my purse, which is in. Oh. Um, I'll be wearing it to the Arthi, which is happening right after this. Is that what we're going to? Where are we going to next? We're going to an Arthi, which is uh, kind of an offering to the gods or to a god. In our case, we use Ganesha because Ganesha is the destroyer of obstacles. And it's, he's, he's a very universal symbol of Hinduism. He's the elephant headed god. And so we'll be uh, basically offering our prayers to him and asking for his blessings in the sense that we, you know, we really want to have a clear path ahead. What is the actual group that we're meeting with? This group is called the Hindu Student Organization and it is the first and the primary Hindu group on USC's campus. And so we try, to, we, we're very non-denominational, we don't, you know, really harp on sect. I don't think you can much when you're Hindu simply because of so many different ways of practice. But we get together every week and we do some discussion and an arti or an offering just to, you know, get together and have a space to express our spirituality. And so that's really our role. Can anybody come? It doesn't matter what religious background you're from. In Hinduism, there are many paths, one truth. And the way you find it, it's up to you. Uh, for us, um, the, the, the light is the main source of everything. Like, light is God. But then the idea is that we, we light a, a, a lamp uh, with the wick and oil. So the oil is consider is, is the one which helps the, the light to grow, you know. But the idea is that the reason why we pray the lamp with the with the wick is because you can transfer it. So it kind of symbolizes that if I share what I know to someone, I'm enlightening the other person, so we are transferring the light. So I'm getting some of the wick tonight. Exactly. You are awesome. getting the light. So typically we'll go into some sort of discussion after this, whether it's something that one of us read in a newspaper that we think relates to religion or spirituality or Hinduism specifically. But I think today, since we have you here, if there's any questions that you have or if you want to talk more about your interest in religion or... One of the things that I, I had a, a deep question about was the idea of karma. You know, there are a lot of people who, who are not in a good place, and if I was looking at them thinking, oh, in, in the last life they must have done something to deserve that, I don't know how that would affect things like compassion and empathy, and if it does. The, the entire idea behind this philosophy is that we still do as much good as possible, but then how much they get is based on their karma. When they're born, the way I see it is that they're born with a clean slate, but what happened before determines how they're born. I can see how that could be a problem in the sense that somebody looks and says, oh, you did bad things in your last life, that's why you were born this way. It makes more sense to help that person because it's not about what they did in their last life, it's about who they are in this life. Was everyone in this group raised in a, a religious household or did do you question your religion ever, or how do you deal with that? I was raised in a pretty Hindu household, however, I went to Catholic high school, and my, the city that I was raised in was predominantly Muslim. I questioned the whole idea of karma, and why some people are born less fortunate than others, and what that, the implications of that in their current life. How is it to be a, a Hindu in, a, in America versus a Hindu in India, and, and what have you noticed that's different about about the cultures and how they view faith? Only when you when you are away from something, you actually realize the value of it. So when I was in in India, like I used to explore very little of Hinduism, and a lot of stuff I learned was after I came here. Like in India, like say I go to a temple on a regular basis, right? No one would actually ask me what, the, what does that means, you know? So when someone asks me what it means, now I have to explain to them what it is. And as you get a flow of questions from different people about your faith, you end up researching a lot more to actually understand what you are actually doing. Like you don't have to answer if you don't sure, want to. Sure, sure. But like where do you stand in terms of just like core beliefs, whether it's agnostic or spiritual or That's a really good question. I think right now where I stand in terms of belief is that it it's my job to try and communicate 
views of other people so that it makes those beliefs of others more accessible. Because to me, religion is something that uh, is too often in our society used to discriminate or separate when it should be something that is meant to unify and start a discussion. So uh, hopefully I can be a catalyst to start that discussion. I think not many people go as far as you are and like care enough to really address topics like this. You guys have been so wonderful. It's been really a great evening to get all those different perspectives and I, I really appreciate it. Having you here too. Yeah. <laughs> it was awesome. So, what finals does everybody have? Anybody got a final tomorrow? I had a final yesterday. Really? A... Wow. You gotta get out of here, man. <laughs> what are you doing here? Well, that was a fun evening, and Vitra is great because uh, you know she's somebody that's making the most of her life, even though she's getting another one. It's been a really great night with a, a bunch of really thoughtful uh, youngins and I would hang out with all of them if it didn't make me feel so weird to be hanging out with 20 year olds. Can't do that anymore and not be a weirdo. It's like that Matthew McConaughey in Dazed and Confused. Except I'm wearing a shirt. Soul Pancake, subscribe.